Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back here on Mark's Aquatics. On today's little video, what I thought I'd do is make a little culture up for you of Infusoria. So, you can copy all the things that I've been doing with uh, throughout the other videos that I've been doing and I'll link that to each playlist that I've got for each individual species that I've been doing. If I've been breeding the Neon Tetras or the Black Tetras, I'll add that in the playlist, okay? So you guys, if you're new to the channel, can go through See how that's made, see how this is made first before you attempt to start breeding the fish. So you've got all that little sequence of events in place. So uh, you'll have more successful breeding that way, okay? Um, thank you all so much for, uh, for all my uh, messages about Jack, poor old guy. Really don't know what happened to him. Like I said, I've just come in in the morning and he was just on the bottom and um, he, yeah, he just passed away. Love him and uh, it was a real shame. He was a real character. I've got lots and lots of babies, got lots of his sons and daughters in the workshop like you saw on the other video um, that I did yesterday actually. Um, but yeah, probably sad, it's one of those things, it's like having a cat or a dog, you know, if you're into those and you're coming in the morning you, and it's your routine, you know, it's your routine in the morning where you go in, you'll feed your fish or you'll feed your cats, you'll feed your dog, you know, do all those sort of things, that, that, that routine that you do with them, you know, and I'm going to miss coming down and... Um, and feeding him because he was always like he was always coming out creeping underneath the water lettuce and um popping away you know dropping little bug bites in for him and stuff like that and he used to he would actively come out and see me first thing in the morning which is nice which i like you guys already know if you keep better they're very very sociable little little fish they really do uh, get attracted to you and um follow your movements around which is one of the reasons why i like them so much um so anyway so thank you very much for all those messages that i got um really appreciate that and um, so what I thought I'd do, changing it now into the infusoria culture, um, I've got a large acrylic tube in the kitchen and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some different things and we're going to take you through a day-to-day -day, um, view of the, I think I've done it up to about day three and then I went on to about day seven because you go through a stage with about three or four days where nothing's really happening at all apart from it absolutely stinks. And, uh, those of you who have tried and made this, um, made these cultures in the past will know very, very well that um, they will stink the house out. So keep them in a shed or in a conservatory, somewhere out of the way in, in the sunlight, um, where they're going to, where they're going to, you know, grow and, um, and 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 just basically everything just ferments in this tub. And these little guys appear and they scoff all the uh, all the decaying plant matter in there. So let's get to the kitchen and um, and we'll have a little look how we make these cultures up, and that will help you breed your fish. And you'll have a lot more success that way, okay? So let's go and get some let's go and get some of these little guys cooking in the kitchen. Right, some of you guys have asked me how I do the infusoria culture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do you a start to finish on the um, on the actual culture itself, okay? Now I've got a, an acrylic tube here which I use um because I've got one. It doesn't have to be an acrylic tube, it can be any type of container you can find. I've just got this so I use it. It can be an old glass jar. Um, it can be a pint glass, it could be anything at all, it's just something that can basically hold um, water, a little bit of uh, little bit of plant life and a little bit of rotting um, vegetation in the bottom, okay? Now today I've gone and put in a couple of boiled Brussels sprouts, okay? Now I've boiled these until they're soft and then what I've done is I've just added tank water, okay, to, the, to that vessel there, to that tube and I've put in, in the top, is a little bit of rickia, which I've got from one of my tanks there as you can see, and a little bit of duckweed as well. Now that will already have the infusoria on it, which is the micro life, which inhabits all your plants and is present in your aquarium all the time, okay? It's just it's too small for you to see, but it's not, but you don't really go around looking for it, so you don't really tend to notice it, since you're looking at your fish for most of the time. But that's what's in there. Now that's got the culture on there. Now as this rots down, these Brussels sprouts down the bottom here, they're going to start to decay, and when they do, you're going to find that your water in here is going to turn milky, okay? And that is what's called a bacterial bloom. Now that's going to be the bacteria in the water growing away and colonising and eating away at that at the plant life that's in there, okay? And then after a few days, you'll start to see little white dots appear on the side of the glass or on the side of the plastic in this case. There's all kinds of bits of detritus and things floating around in there in a moment, but there will be baby ones in there. You may see a couple, but you can see a few just swimming around there. Now they're already in there, but there's not many 
at the moment we need them to be breeding prolifically in there to feed our fry okay so the little white dots you can see are the adult infusoria now they're going to breed like crazy in a few days time okay so that's what we've got to keep our eye out for you see they're already in the water but we're going to see them and what will happen is you'll see them they'll create in the oh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a day-to-day -day, um video on this and i'll tell you a little bit about it every single day and the stages that we go through to what we get to in the end okay so i'll see you on the next stage right okay guys it's day two as you can see now that water has gone a little bit cloudy and that bacterial bloom started that's what makes it go all that horrible milky color and it's going to get worse than that it's just starting to smell a little bit at the moment so it's not going to get any better I'm afraid it's going to get worse than before it gets better because as those Brussels sprouts in there or broccoli or potato or whatever you've used for your culture starts to rot down in that water it's going to stink <laughs> there's no getting away from that so like I said try and do it outside somewhere and um, and keep it away from uh, from the other half keep it in a shed Make sure it's in a lit window though, okay? So I'll get back to you tomorrow for day three. Right guys, day three. Vegetables have now floated to the top. Starting to smell beautiful. Awful. <laughs> and um, you can see it's slowly decaying there. And it's got a lot more bacterial bloom in the water now as well. So we'll have a look tomorrow and see what's going on tomorrow. Right, okay guys, here's the finished product. Don't worry about the one on the right. That's actually a little Daphnia culture that I've got going in there in a bit of uh, in a bit of water. There's quite a few uh, little babies hopping around in there now. I'm just trying a few of them in there for the time being. But there is your Infusoria culture all finished. Now I'll try and get as close as I can. But you can remember when we first showed you the the pot. We had a couple of them in there just hovering around. Now you can see they have multiplied in their millions. There is no end of them in there now. And um, we've got lots and lots to feed the fry. Um, they're mostly congregated on the surface there. You can see that white scum on the surface. That's actually thousands upon thousands and thousands of them up there. And um, if I actually rock the bowl a bit, you'll actually see them come down. Look at that. Absolutely millions of them. And that's what you want, guys. This the sort of stuff you've got to go through this awful, stinky stage to get to this stage, and then you just suck out a little, a little pipette full of these guys. Now I've got a syringe here, and as it happens, all the angelfish fry have. I'm just going to take some of these out into a syringe, and then hopefully you can see them sucked in half the plant life as well. But you can see there's quite a few in there. I'll take a better dip out of there in a minute. In fact, I'll just pause you. You can see how many's coming down there in their millions. There really is millions. They swirl around under their own under their own power. They're actually able to swim and zip through the water. So there's absolutely millions of them in there. So I'm going to get a few more in a minute. Right, okay, guys, I've got a few more in here now. You can see them. I'll try and get out to the light in the syringe. But you can see how many's in there against the strip light. Got a bit of rickier in there as well, that's not going to worry. But we got lots to do then, so there you go. That's how you create an infusoria culture, which is the micro life you need to feed your little tiny fry. As you can see, there is millions upon millions in there, and you're going to have enough there to feed your fish until they're right through that first crucial couple of um, couple of week stage, or maybe eight, maybe maybe just over a week, and then they'll be on our team. Yeah, freshly hatched brine shrimps micro worms and water worms and all the other stuff that you can use as your um as your little fry mature but what we'll do now is we'll go down i'll show you the parents first there's mum and dad now you can see i left some of the fry in there with them so they can be nice and parental it'd be nice to see them bringing up the fry for you so you can follow that along i'm sorry it's a little bit glary in here i'll try and move things away so it's not as glary there's a little bit better. There's proud mum and there's proud dad. But you can see there's about maybe 30 of the babies just swimming around 
and they're all airborne now they've all had their little gulps their little you can see them there with dad sorry with mum but it's lovely to see them being parental collecting them up when they go stray too far and putting them back onto a leaf where obviously they're not going to stay anymore because they're free swimming now if I move next door this is what I've taken out look at that lot now I took that lot out because I want to rear a lot of these up obviously and hopefully um, take a few back and sell some and make a little bit of money to put back into the hobby and so some of you guys can um, get hold of some of these as well later on when they're mature or semi-mature and um, old enough to be rehomed but there'll be a nice little series for you to um, to follow along if you haven't I've got a video on how to breed angelfish it's called pop back and have a look at that from start where I set everything up put the pair in all through the spawning laying eggs and everything so you can follow that along but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this little culture now that we've been creating into the tank and you might see there's a lot of you might not see them come um, I'll try and get there if I hold it against something black I don't want to press it in too hard because I'll squirt the babies everywhere Okay, I'm just starting to depress that now. I think a lot of the oxygen bubbles are going to put you off from seeing these, so I'll try and get it a little bit closer. There you go, you can see all those little infusoria now going in there. I'll squirt them on top of that sponge filter as well. I'm trying to look and do this at the same time. But they're getting blown on top of that filter now. Now, they're going to stay on there. They'll go in amongst that filter. I'll put some out into the water column as well. You can see them going down there like little tiny grains. Nearly all out. So that's going to be enough for these guys for today. Try and get in a little bit more closer for you so you can see the infusoria. And you can see some of these guys nailing them. Look at that, it just looks like snow. You can see the fryer now very actively foraging, hunting, and gobbling up those at Lymphusoria. Now, a lot, some of you have asked me if, um, if these guys will take uh, microworms and banana worms. They might be a little bit big for them. I always tend to feed everything the Infusoria culture first because it's guaranteed that they'll fit them in their mouths and they'll eat them and they'll come on quick. So that's what I always do, and within a few, within a week, then you can feed them the bon uh, banana worms, the other micro worms, water worms. They will take. They're the smallest type of uh, micro worm you can get. There's a video on those in my playlist as well, somewhere along the line. I'll try and remember to link it. I'm always saying I'm going to link things, and I always forget. I do apologise, but tell me if I forget, and I will do it as soon as I can. But look at those little guys hunting away there. There's a right little cloud of them there. In fact, if I turn the workshop lights off, I'll get rid of my reflection and you might get a better view of them. There you go, it's a little bit better. Not miles better, but... Um, we'll try and get on top of that sponge filter there and see if we can see any of the little guys picking away. You see the water worms on top of the filter case as well there, on top of the sponge. And there'll be lots of the infusoria on there as well. So I've given them a good, a good head start. They're only free swimming um, this morning. But they're all coming on very well, all healthy looking. And we got a good whack of them in there to bring up. Anyway guys, I hope you liked that little video on how to um, create your own infusoria culture. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the old notification bell for upcoming videos. And that way you won't miss anything. And as always, you're all stars. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Take care. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar